Hello everyone and welcome to an incredible game from uh, basically round 6 of Alireza's uh, race to the candidates. He's now facing uh, Sergei Pedorchuk with the white pieces and uh, he's already 5-0 if he wins this one. Uh, I mean, he already overtook Wesley in the live ratings, but he needs to win this one uh, to sort of, uh, sort of cement it. Uh, and uh, it's a really brutal game. The clock times are incredibly vital for you to guys to really grasp what happened here. And uh, at the end of this video, I will also share some uh, tr truly incredible news. So stay tuned for that. So Alireza has the white pieces and uh, he opens with pawn to e4. So this is the move that he trusts uh, will get him safely into the candidates tournament. Uh, pawn to c5, knight f3. We have pawn to e6 and now uh, striking against the Sicilian with d4. So captures, captures, and now knight to c6, going for the time on of variation, knight to c3, and now queen to c7. Uh, like Fischer defeated um, uh, Taimanov in the candidates matches of 1971 with a result of 6-0. to uh, Probably that is what Fischer will try to do against the Taimanov variation. But here uh, it transposes into the floor variation. We have bishop to e3 and now pawn to a6. The, the, uh, transposing back into the Taimanov, the Bastrico variation, a3. We have pawn to b5 and knight captures on c6. But here we have a very interesting um, uh, setup for uh, Fedorchuk. Queen captures on c6 and after bishop to e2 just bishop to b7 so of course uh, this is too powerful a battery you have to do something about it first queen to d2 uh, and now there are a couple of moves that have been played here like rook to c8 obviously a top move in any sicilian setup but here we have queen to d6 by fedorchuk and now uh, what does Alireza do here? One thing he definitely doesn't want to do is trade queens this early on, uh, having the white pieces, but uh, there's really not a better move here. I mean, you can't really avoid the queen trade. So he just castles, and of course, it is now as of move 10 that we have a completely new game. So Alireza just castles queenside, and um, Fedorchu just trades queens. We have captures, captures, and he goes pawn to b4 to mess up Alireza's pawn structure and also to uh, open up the b file to make uh, targets for that a pawn. So captures captures and the bishop captures on b4 getting his strong bishop into the game now creating this annoying pin here and also d4 pawn is now weak so you have to defend it but first bishop to d4 uh, going after the g7 pawn so knight to f6 and only now uh, defending with pawn to f3 uh, we have bishop to c6 and now rook d back to d1 uh, unpinning as this is very annoying of course uh, we have castles by uh, sergey and now bishop to e5 trying to get um uh, more useful squares for the bishop at some point the bishop to d6 might be an interesting move uh, so rook f to c8 and now knight to a2 forcing the bishop to move back we have bishop to e7 and now bishop to d6 with the idea that if the bishops get traded off uh, the pawn here will remain on d7 and before uh, black advances it all the way to d5 you can't really claim that you've equalized uh, the position fully or uh, you know so so you think King to f8 and now pawn to b3 as there is a semi-open b file on the board. Bishop captures on d6. We have rook captures and now just king to e7. Attacking Alireza's rook here. Uh, rook h to d1 and now pawn to a5. And if you look at the clock times, Alireza is already down to 17 minutes on the clock. Uh, whereas um, uh, Sergei has 37 minutes on the clock. We have king to b2. Alireza improves the position of his king and now rook to c7. Uh, and now we have knight to c3 here. Uh, probably the first uh, move where Alireza could have played a little bit better. You should never allow pawn to a4. And you, you should probably stop it with something like rook to d4. And then if white persists, at least you get the b4 square for your knight. But he allowed it uh, by going knight to c3. And now the immediate pawn to a4. And just uh, opening up the a file, of course, would be... Uh, the b file would be pretty dangerous with both of the rooks here on the a and c files. So bishop to c4 and now a captures on b3. We have c captures on b3 and the rook to b7. Now Alireza will have to defend the weak b3 pawn for the rest of the game. We have rook c back to d4 uh, and just knight to e8 trying to get some useful squares for this knight. If you can get it to d6 should be very good. Not right away, but at some point or even at the, the c7 then maybe to, to, to b5. Uh, but here we have pawn to e5. 
Uh, now, what does this do? It uh, restricts the knight to, to go to d6 or f6, and also it really prevents black from executing d5. So here we have rook to a5 going after the pawn here, and you can't really defend it with f4 because the uh, pawn on g2 is hanging. So Alireza defends it with rook to e1, and now knight to c7. Now he wants to get the knight into the game, but by playing knight to c7, you weaken the g7 pawn a little bit. And now Alireza feels comfortable into playing pawn to f4. He doesn't care about bishop captures on g2 because he will get rook g1 and rook captures on g7. Uh, so knight to a8, still finding uh, better squares for the knight. We have bishop back to d3, and knight to b6. The knight needs to be somehow included into uh, an attack on this uh, b3 pawn, either reach the c5 square or the d4 square, uh, or have some maybe checks, uh, if at all possible. So here we have pawn to g4. Uh, notice that you cannot play bishop captures on h7, although this would be a, a great homage to the great Bobby Fish who you know uh, did win his candidates matches with a, with a result of six to zero uh, trapping his own bishop although here it would be quite worse than what Bobby did against Spassky in the world chess championship match but okay pawn to g4 here of course you want to now start pushing h4 f5 g5 and so on uh, knight to d5 the knight is becoming more powerful by the move we have knight to a2 uh, not perhaps the greatest move by Alireza but uh, he can't really afford to, to trade pieces he needs to keep some winning chances alive Pawn to h6. Now, not uh, you don't have to worry about this. Or also an, an advancement of the pawn to g5. So all it is, it starts pawn to h4. We have rook b to a7, doubling up on the a file, threatening to pick up the knight, and just bishop back to b1. Nicely defending, rook to b7, and now bishop back to d3. Uh, but uh, Fedorchuk says, hey, I don't need a win here. I'm very happy with a draw. He just repeats rook b to a7, and all it is, it has to figure out a different plan. So he goes knight to c1, which you one could argue is uh is, is a good square for the knight but th that's all there is i mean th th that knight is not moving from there uh rook to b7 putting again pressure on the b3 pawn and now alereza strikes with pawn to f5 but strikes towards what uh knight to b4 now putting pressure on the bishop and the bishop back to b1 alereza has to keep um all the pieces on the board and here bishop to d5 would really go a long way for black but uh, sergey does not uh, necessarily want to push this for a win he's also getting very low on time he's uh, two minutes and 40 seconds so he just goes rook to d5 offers further trades alereza declines rook to c4 and rook d back to b5 again preparing to put more pressure on the b file uh, rook to f4 now by alereza constantly having to keep um, uh, in mind that uh, you know trades definitely uh, don't go uh, his way and now bishop to d5. Now the two rooks and the bishops are nicely aligned with that b3 pawn. And all that remains is to bring the knight to attack the pawn as well. And you can't really capture. If you capture, then just bishop captures. Down. These pawns are excellently defended. There's really not much you can do here. So Alireza starts pawn to f6 with check. We have captures, captures. And now king to d6. And uh, this is by far the top move, the, the, the best move recommended by the engine. Uh, it doesn't really work uh, well for black if you go back. So here we have pawn to g5. Alireza hoping to get some sort of a pass pawn here. Uh, but the push isn't uh, all that impressive with the rook on f4. You can't like sacrifice a pawn and create a passed h pawn. And even if you could, it wouldn't really work here. So h captures, h captures. Now Alireza's only chance of winning this is to somehow execute g6 and then advance the past f pawn to victory uh, but of course sergey uh, sees through that he already puts a rook on the back rank uh, rook to, sorry rook to h4 preparing to go after the f7 pawn and now knight to c6 uh, we have bishop to c2 now preparing to defend the b3 pawn and now even pawn to e5 the absolute strongest move recommended by the engine freeing up the, the e6 square for the black king uh, we have rook to d1 now pinning the bishop but now knight to d4 and now uh, everything is going after that b3 pawn and alireza really is uh, out of um uh, out of any active ideas uh, you, you can't really move away from the defense of the b3 pawn maybe try to sacrifice it and go after some sort of a pawn push uh, because you're just going to get destroyed so here alireza played rook to h3 and uh, it was in this position on the move 49 that they agreed to a draw sergey is completely winning here uh, but i mean you still have to play uh, many many good moves uh, uh, but uh, you know once he improves his position with something like king to e6 he can safely capture on c2 and he will have a, a winning endgame. But uh, as this is Alireza's race to the candidates, uh, uh, it, it didn't go all that well for him. So he finishes it off with a five and a half out of six. Uh, and... Uh, 
uh, Wesley now again overtakes him in the uh, in in the rating list. You can see that now Wesley is on 2757.4 and Alireza is on 2756.1. But here comes the interesting part. It's not over. This this event is over, but uh, I don't know if this is true or not. I, I can check one more time on Twitter uh, just to see if uh, if this is really happening. Uh, but no, it's not. Yeah, uh, it seems it was it was just a it, it was just a ruse. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, uh, someone from the C squared uh, podcast uh, posted this uh, on on Twitter saying that there will be a match tomorrow. Uh, uh, consisting of two two players, so it's not going to be a tournament, a match. Uh, and uh, you know, people people thought that it was going to be Alireza against someone else, you know, to to crack that uh, one point lead that Wesley has. But now I see it's not. It's uh, something completely different. Uh, uh, Yuli Osmak will face Sergei Fedorchuk uh, in a match. So it doesn't seem like uh, it will be. Yeah, I don't know. People are people are still very, very confused by this. Yeah, because Fide first announced that it's going to be an eight game match, but now uh, you know they say it's six. So uh, for the moment, it is Wesley who uh, uh, who qualifies for the Canada's uh, tournament via the rating spot. So big congratulations to Wesley and also a very nice Christmas present for him. I'm very sure, uh, unless something happens, uh, you know, tomorrow or maybe after Christmas, which we cannot know. So uh, for the moment, it is Wesley who qualifies for the FIDE Candidates Tournament. It was a nice push by Alireza. I mean, uh, a, 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 a defeating 6-0, any 6 Grandmasters or 3 Grandmasters, 6-0, uh, you know, over a course of 3 two-game matches uh, is uh, very, very hard and extremely unlikely. And he came this close, uh, but uh, Sergei just, you know, he had an ironclad defense. There was no way to push through. Through this, Alireza really had to play suboptimal moves to get some sort of a playable position, and he did get it, but it was just really bad. And you know, he decided, okay, let's just uh, get a draw here uh, before this goes uh, out of hand. So, yeah, uh, that's the game, and a little bit of extra info about the candidates' tournaments. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Once again, big congratulations to Wesley for now, I'm guessing. Uh, but yeah, pretty sure that's it. Uh, I would like to thank Kenneth Few, Nikola Vucic, Maximo Eisern, uh, Amelia Grace Scott, and Sven Feurer uh, for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.